here is a Blue Ink by Private Reserve American Blue. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. This is an incredibly vivid and bright blue in most pens. As a color, when it feels like rivals the infamous Bay State blue, it's just so electric a tone, so energetic feeling that most descriptions won't do it any real justice. It does have a little bit of tone variation. Note the wet, fine pen in the writing samples. But otherwise, the vivid tone is always there. And unlike Bay State Blue, you don't have to deal with any kind of staining, staining issues. Like Bay State Blue, it is got no shading really whatsoever. I mean, there's moments where you see a little bit, but not really. It's the vivid tone that you're going to want most from this. I just can't help the comparison, and I'm going to try to make sure that I put the base state blue in the color comparison so it can be seen side by side. It's so bright, it makes you feel alive. I am alive, more alive, invigorated. That's the word. It's an invigorating color. The pen for today is a Pilot Metropolitan. All of the writing samples are done with a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib, which writes rather dry. A Hero 7035 with a fine nib that writes wet. A Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib and an average flow. A Lamy Safari with a broad nib that writes average. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there, starting with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get a nice bright blue with no feathering, no spread, a couple of moments that certainly are showing some shading, like in the first line, the E on were, or the L on several, or the KES of makes on the second line, and the H of shapes. It's definitely there and capable, but I think you'll agree this entire time that the shading is not what you're going to want this ink for. It is incredibly darker than it was with the soft fine. A lot darker. It almost makes me feel like maybe I didn't clean the pen out as well as I should have. And then if that were the case, the saving grace truly does become that I'm using a bunch of pens. Because this is not really the tone that we're going to get from this pen all the way through. What we have here has no feather, no spread. Yes, we see some shading. I don't know that this is the most accurate form of this color. I may have made my second cleaning mistake in a lot of inks. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the soft fine. I'm not going to bother comparing it to the wet fine because I think I might have had an error there. This tone is vivid and there and it beautiful. No feather, no spread, no shading, just an energetic tone on the page. Really enjoy using this a ton. Looking at the broad nib, it is a little bit darker and more vivid than it was with the medium nib. Now, with that, no feather, no spread. I'm going to say no shading, though I can point out that the word like is darker than the word good right next to it on the first line. But really what we're getting is a very solid tone with beautiful, beautiful, just... It's beautiful on the page the whole way. <laughs> 
at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 9 milliliters of ink. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the soft, fine nib, it is about the same tone that we get on the Claire Fontaine. A little bit duller in tone. Doesn't have some of the vibrancy there, but it is still very bright on this paper. It does not feather. It does not spread. It does not shade. It does look beautiful and bright on the page the entire time. This is really an amazing, amazing blue to look at. I just... I hope people watching it are enjoying the color as much as I do. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine. Lighter tone than we got with the Claire Fontaine. Now we get no feathering, we get no spread. We do see some tone variation happening as in we see a shift of the tone from the first line to the fourth line. Not so much that it's shading, but a tone shift in what's going on. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the soft fine nib, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get no shading, we get a beautiful bright blue that is funny because it's certainly not as bright as it was and it doesn't look like it's trying to be screaming on the page though it is screaming, look at me and read the important words that I'm writing. Looking at the broad nib, it is darker than it was with the medium, a little bit lighter, a little bit flatter than we had on the Claire Fontaine, with no feathering, with no spread, with no shading, with all of the beauty that this ink is bringing to the table. Looking at the back of the page, you see that this ink certainly gets much deeper into the paper, meaning you probably couldn't write back here comfortably because you may make it harder to read. But nothing bled through, nothing touched the page underneath. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a little darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. A little bit of a tone shift that we're getting here. I, it's slight. It's not making it a green. It's making it look as if there might be a green undertone, but it is still definitely blue. It's a result of the paper with no feather, with no spread, with a couple of moments of shading that do happen. The second L in still, the T in felt, the KE in like, the H in hungry, all a little bit darker than the rest of their words. So it can, though shading is not the standout quality for this. fine nib. It's a lot darker than it was with the soft fine. The same tone that we got on the Claire Fontaine. No feather, no spread, no shading. I still think I may not have cleaned that pen as well as I should have. I think that's my second mistake. I'm sticking with that. 
looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the soft fine nib. A lot lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Now we do get a little bit of feathering. It occurs on bacon, on toast. The embers, fire, feathering is happening here quite a bit. So is a little bit of spread. Now the feathering and the spread, both of them are not an unmanageable, hateful thing, but they're certainly present. Shading, we're not having any kind of shading, which is redeeming it a little bit in some of its less desirable characteristics currently while writing. Looking at the broad nib, it is darker than it was with the medium. It is feather. I'm sorry, I got a, the Claire Fontaine part. It's a little lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine, not as vivid as on the Claire Fontaine. Still a great blue. The greenish undertones that existed in the previous on this paper weren't there on the medium and aren't there now. I think the uh, little bit wetter is really helping in that case. Now it does feather fairly consistently and it does spread and quite a bit. This is definitely not an ink that's cooperating with this paper a great deal. We get no shading. We just get a blue that's not performing as well as we would prefer. Looking at the page underneath, you see there's a few spots where I did circle that it did touch the page underneath. It did bleed through, touching it, making it harder to write on the next page. You probably could, but I would avoid this ink with this paper. Now, when we see the back of the page, you see there is quite a bit of ghosting. And so again, you're probably not gonna wanna use this ink on the page, not just for the bleed, but for the amount of ghost that you get. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left, Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left and water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, we get just a tad bit lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine with no feather, no spread couple moments of shading. I want to say there's a few less moments of shading than there was on the Claire Fontaine, though in some of the downstrokes, it's definitely showing itself. So it can not the standout feature to go for with this ink. Looking at the wet fine nib, quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine, a lot lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine. Really, I think what we're getting to see here is an ink push its way through and deal with my not cleaning a pen as well. And I'm going to make sure I do a much better job at it this time. Second mistake. Looking at the medium nib, it is quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine, a little lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get no shading, we get a beautiful, vivid blue, but it is not as lively as it was on the Claire Fontaine, and that is the slight off-white of this paper in how it makes you see it. Looking at the broad nib, it is a little bit darker than we had with the medium, a little bit lighter, I'd say quite a bit lighter than on the Claire Fontaine. No feather, no spread. There is some shading coming through in some darker spots. Look at what on the first line and the H is a little bit darker and you look at brought the R and the G are a little bit darker and look at Nick on the second line, not the name Nick as in Nick of time and the K gets a little bit darker. So. It's showing more shading here than it did on the Claire Fontaine. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. 
With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Aurora Blue. Here is Diatrementis Artist Ink Blue. Here is Krishna Sailors. Here is Private Reserve Lake Placid Blue. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a little lighter and a bit more dull than it was on the Claire Fontaine, yet it is still performing really well on this paper. This paper, you know, really gets no love, and I love this paper. No feather, no spread, only a couple of dots of shading, light peppering, bringing that back. Light peppering is shading in there. Uh, not bad. I don't feel like it's giving you the real qualities of this ink here. Looking at the wet fine nib, it's quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine. A whole lot lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We're really looking at most of it, it looks like, having push through if I didn't clean it as well. We get no feather, no spread, no shading, still not exactly sure. However, at the very end, when you get to the don't interrupt last two words, not don't interrupt me, but it's, that's Gandalf talking the Bilbo, not me talking to you. We're gonna start to see a bit more of the blue really happening. find quite a bit, a whole lot lighter than it was with the Claire Fontaine. We get no feather, no spread, no shading, but we do get great writing that looks incredibly well. If you are taking your notes in this notebook with this ink, it is distinctive who's writing. I don't know that you could find a ballpoint that looks anything like this. It is a bit darker than we had with the medium. It is quite a bit lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We get no shading. We don't have the vibrancy that's there on the Claire Fontaine. But if they're not next to each other, it is a very, very there blue. And it looks fantastic. Looking at the back of the page, you see that there's a very, there's nothing really for ghosting. It's doing such a good job. No bleeding, nothing touch the page underneath. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a pink ink by Lamy Vibrant Pink. Here is an orange ink by Diamine Pumpkin. Here is a magenta shimmering ink by Organic Studios Unicorn Blood. Here is a yellow ink by Diamine Amber. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. <laughs> Looking at the soft fine nib, it is quite a bit darker than it was with the Claire Fontaine. It does feather, it does spread. Neither, neither of those should be a problem if you wanted to use this ink with a dry soft fine or a dry fine on this paper. I don't think you're going to have any kind of real problem with it. And anybody that complains, poke them in the eye and see if they see something else wrong. Don't do that. Don't poke someone in the eye. That's wrong. Thank <laughs> you.
Looking at the wet fine dip, it is quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine. Quite a bit more blue than we saw in the Claire Fontaine. I think we've finally been pushing some of that ink out, and my mistake can finally come to a rest. We do have feathering, we do have spread, we do have tone variation as it's shifting from whatever mess it was before to more of this ink, though not completely there. Looking at the medium nib, quite a bit darker than it was with the soft fine, a whole lot lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Yes, it feathers. Shocker. It spreads. Double shocker. It doesn't shade. Triple shocker. I mean, it's there. I wouldn't want to use it. It's... The paper is bad. Looking at the broad nib, it is right about the same tone as the medium, a whole lot lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We do get tiny bits of feathering. I think it's not feathering as bad as it did with the medium. It's doing it much better here. We do get quite a bit of spread. And I don't think it's spreading as much as the medium, but I really wouldn't want to continue using this broad on this paper. It's not uh, shading. It certainly is still vivid on the page, though, something the medium didn't have. Looking at the page underneath, that's not a leopard print. That's all the spotting that this did touching the page underneath. Now, these are all tiny little spots, and you could probably use the page if you wanted to, but if you're especially picky and anal retentive like I am, then you might not want to. And when you see the back of the page, you completely understand why, because it is all ghosting all the time. Who are you going to call? So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. Personally, a wet fine is too dark and it isn't for me. I did get that ink out of there and I did get to see it that way. I just forgot to film it, my bad. It just wasn't for me. Now, the dry fine is very nice as a tone, but it doesn't send chills down my spine as I see it on the page. It was the medium flow from really any nib size that did it. I love it a bunch. So any nib is fine. Just go with a medium flow pen. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you're not subscribed, I would invite you to do so now.